Life is always fair. I really enjoy repeating myself over and over again. I just love when the kids talk back to me. I don't care if you get a job this summer. I don't care if you get detention. Uh, uh, I, I can't open this jar. See if mom can open it. Just take your time in there, okay? No means maybe. Hey, why don't you bring that ball inside and play with it? Hey, don't put that back where you found it. Just leave it on the floor. Ew, bacon. If you put a dent in the car, it's really no big deal. It's 10 a.m. Go back to bed. Look, whatever your friends are doing, just do the exact same thing. I got more than enough sleep last night. If your friends are okay with it, then I'm okay with it. Stop signs are just a suggestion. You don't need a chaperone. You don't need a seatbelt. You don't need a savings account. You should buy the jeans with the holes in them. Hey, we're all gonna go to church, but you can just sleep in, okay? Can we please just hang out in here for another 10 minutes? Hey, can we get some more bickering back there? All right, bills! Yay, traffic! Woohoo, taxes! Yes! Laundry! Hey, can you kids come in here and jump on my bed? Quick, go tell mom what happened right away. You don't need to finish your dinner. Hey, look at your phone when I'm talking to you. I wish I had a smaller TV. We got you that phone for a reason. Texting boys. All right, everyone, listen up. Mom and I are going out of town this weekend, so please, mess up the whole house while we're gone. Please throw a few parties while we're gone. Please forget about the dog entirely while we're gone. Hey, when you're finished pouring that, can you just leave it out on the counter all day? Thanks. Hey, what are you doing? I'm gonna bungee jump out of this tree. That's a really good idea. Hey, happy Father's Day. How's everybody doing? That was pathetic. How's everybody doing? There you go. Awesome. Hey, we are so glad you are here today. Uh, I want to welcome all those watching online. My name is Nick, for all you guests. I'm the pastor here, and this is my lovely assistant uh, today, Steve. Could you give Steve a round of applause, please? He's amazing, yes. Um, also, hey, just want to remind you really quick, I know Jamie did it, but it's a great day. We love Father's Day, and so we're giving away this cooler, uh, and we're also, I will be a part of the hot dog eating competition after service, and so I heard first service, somebody won with two and a half hot dogs. I can eat that in like 30 seconds, okay? So anyway, uh, but it's 50 bucks if you win. So uh, also, the throwing, football throwing, for all you guys who are like, back in the day, I used to, stop it, okay? Just today, you get to prove it, and just so you know... I already did the football throwing thing, and I'm not making this up. Steve, you can listen. He's he's doing this because he knows it's true. I threw it, and I asked him how far did I throw it, and they said, Nick, we ran out of tape to measure it. I was like, okay, done, winner. I just so anyway. So all you guys that like, oh, I'm I'm awesome at that. Hey, today's your chance to prove it. Fifty bucks for that too. We're so glad. Um, but anyway, with all that said, we got a great Father's Day. Uh, so glad you're here. But I wanted to bring up Steve also. Steve has all of a sudden taken over our uh, security ministry, and so we believe security is incredibly important, but instead of me saying it, I figured I would introduce him and let him talk a little bit about what he's doing and where he's going with it. So would you all welcome Steve? Thanks, Pastor Nick. Um, I don't know about the football thing. I, I, don't, <laughs> I, won't, I won't even do it again. Um, but anyway. Jesus never repeated his miracles. Just saying. I it just, would, it, 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 that would be a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Um, on a serious note, guys, I just want to come up here and basically let everybody see who I am and, and kind of explain the, the, where security is going with the church. A uh, little history lesson, about a couple years, what, two years, over two years? Three. Three years, the church started. Um, about 50 some odd people, give or take. Um, today we're at, uh, anywhere counting, every, any given Sunday, including children, we're at anywhere around 400. Uh, which is awesome, so give yourself a round of applause for that. Awesome. Uh, and so I started volunteering for security uh, a while back, and I didn't really, there wasn't really a purpose for the security. There was a more of a, okay, you go stand here, and if a kid runs out, chase him down, take him back, and take him to go potty every now and then. Uh, that's not really, as, that was fine with a few people. As we're growing, we need more structured security. Um, so I, part, I partnered with uh, Pastor Nick and a few other leaders in the church. So I just sat down and I told him, I said, look, this is, I have a lot of experience in this, and this is where, where we're at, and this is where we should be. Um, so based on my fear, if, if, any, if anyone is interested or, or you're wondering what is my, you know, how am I going to help people and make it easy for them to find and follow Jesus, and you 
you're you feel like a protector you feel like you know that's somewhere you need to be come see me and I'll just I'll, I can explain the security role to you I can explain to you where we're going in the future um, and you know it, it some some big things are happening we're gonna we're gonna start doing trainings uh, we're gonna you know I'm, I'm going to teach you guys how to be protectors. Uh, there, you know, there's no, no requirements. You, you don't have to be ex-military. You don't have to be police. You don't have to be do prior security. It doesn't matter what your background is. The only thing is you have to be a male and you have to be an adult. Um, so don't think, oh, I can't do this because I don't have any prior. That, that doesn't matter. We just want you for you. Everybody has their own experiences. And we'll, we'll, we take from everybody's experiences and, and build on that. So. Um, that's really about all I have. Again, if I'll be in the back of the auditorium at the end of service if, if you're interested or just have some questions. Uh, just get with me and I'll, I'll answer anything you have. Um, I think that's all I have. That's it? That's it. Uh, you, you, can, you can take over now. Oh, thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> it's a little awkward standing up here. Get off the stage. Okay, thanks. anyway, hey, hey, would you thank Steve so much? Thank you very much. Hey, just so you know, Steve's doing a great job. He's spent so much time thinking it through, and we've got new earpieces, and, and really, we're going to do, if you join that team, we're going to set you up for succeeding that, because it really is a vital, important uh, ministry, and I believe that men are called to be, as you talk about, protectors. And so, anyway, if that interests you, please grab him. It would be a huge help to us and protecting our kids. So, anyway, that's what's going on with that. Today, we're starting a brand new series called This Is What We Do. Because I don't know about you, but I grew up in churches, and, and all the churches had statements about this is what we believe. That if you would walk down the halls, they would have a whole bunch of belief statements, and we believe in this, and we believe in that. You, you would hear pastors talk about, hey, as a church, we believe in this, and we believe in that. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with beliefs. As a matter of fact, if you go on our website, you can find our statement of belief, and we're all about beliefs. But, but what I came to realize, and, and maybe this is some of your stories, maybe not, hopefully not all of them, but for some of your stories, that just because it's written on the wall doesn't mean that's what happens down the hall. That there's a lot of churches and a lot of organizations and a lot of people that say one thing and do something else, right? That if you grew up and, and you were around people at all, you realize very quickly there's this word called hypocrites. And they say one thing, they're like, yeah, I really believe in integrity and honesty and whatever. And you find out later that that person's, you know, stealing money or embezzling or, or cheating on his spouse or whatever. And just all of a sudden, what they said didn't line up with what they really believed and what they did. And so as a church, I want to talk about not just what we believe. I want to talk about what we do. Because it's not enough to talk about what you believe. And in fact, the book of James, and we're not going to look at that this morning, but the book of James is all about this. In fact, he talks and he says, listen, don't tell me what you believe. Don't tell me that you believe in God. Don't tell me that you believe in Jesus. Show me what you do. Because James knows something that you know instinctively. That what people do reveals their values and what they believe way more than what they say. And so for the summer, for the next few weeks, we're going we're gonna to walk through, hey, what do we do, and this is what we do. So if you have a Bible, I want to invite you, and I want to invite you to open up to Mark chapter 6. If not, we'll put it up on the screen for you. But before we jump into that story, I want to, I want to say something. As we, as we look at Scripture, I, I try to encourage you all the time, and I say, listen, you're in the story. That, that if you kind of unpack a whole story, and today we're going to unpack a whole story. We're going to read several verses today together and kind of unpack this, this story of Jesus. Uh, and I say, listen, you're in the story somewhere, and your goal is to find you. Now, in this story we're going to read today, there are three different people, okay? Three different people. Number one is Jesus. Let me be clear. You're not Jesus in the story, okay? Just so, just, I, I don't want you to be like, as I'm reading it going, I think I'm that guy. You're not, okay? I don't care how awesome you are, you're not Jesus in the story, all right? Just cool, where, wherever you're at. Number two, there's a different group of people in the story, and, and it's called disciples. And, and maybe that's a foreign word for you, or I don't know where you're, what your upbringing is, or whatever that is, but disciples, that's a fancy word, or maybe a different word for anybody who would say, you know what? I'm a Christian. I, I, I've committed my life to Christ. I've given my life to Christ. I, I, I'm committed to following his ways. Like, I'm a Christian. All that, that's disciple is another way of saying, I'm a Christian. So if you're here today, whether this is your church or not, whether you're a guest here or not, and if you're a guest, we're so thankful you're here today. Wherever you're at, if you're a Christian, we would say, listen, every time you see the word disciple, that's you. That's who you are in the story. And then there's a third group of people, and it's everybody else. In fact, in the story, it uses the word crowd. 
And so if you're here today and you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm Nick, I'm not a Christian. I'm trying to figure this out. I don't, quite, I don't kind of know. Or maybe my, you know, my dad dragged me here. He said, I asked him what he wanted for Father's Day. He's like, I just want to go to church. And he thought, oh, great, don't you want a gift card? You know, uh, but you're here today, okay? I don't care why you're here, okay? But if you're here today and you're like, listen, I'm not, I'm not a Christian. I believe in that, but maybe kind of intrigued by it or kind of kicking the tires on it. Man, we are so glad you're here today. We want you to know that, listen, as you read the story, you're part of the crowd. And that Jesus had the same thing. That Jesus consistently, as you read the stories in the Gospels, it's so fascinating to me that he had these two different types of people around him at all times. I believe the church at all times should be filled with these two different types of people. That there should be a group of people in the church that are disciples, and there should be a group of people in the church in the crowd. Of people that are kind of exploring their faith and kind of figuring out. And that's actually how it should be because as we read scripture, as we look at the Gospels, that's actually how Jesus did it. And so today, as we unpack the story, I want you to kind of put yourself in this story and kind of figure out what your next step is on this Father's Day. So we're going to pick it up. Mark chapter 6. Here's what it says. When Jesus landed, he was in a boat and saw a large crowd. He had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. And so we start the story, and here's what it is. Jesus starts to teach everybody. Who's in the crowd? It's the crowd and the disciples. He's teaching them all. It doesn't differentiate. Just say, listen, hey, disciples, you come over here. I'm going to teach you something special. You come over, crowd, come over here. It's different. Like, no, he starts to teach. Everybody's paying attention to Jesus. And they have this big, long sermon, okay? You think I talk long? I'm pretty sure Jesus talked a whole lot longer than I did, okay? And so he does this whole thing, and it gets so long. Here's what it says in the next verse. It says, by, the t- by this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples, you came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Here's what I want. I want to just pause, because again, we're going to pause throughout the whole passage, and then really, we're going to unpack this whole story together. But, but I, I want you to see that the disciples, the Christians, they saw a problem. They looked at it, and they saw something. They looked at it and said, listen, it's getting awful late. And okay, kidding, I, I haven't ate. If you ate, I haven't ate either. Jesus has been talking all day. Okay, cool. Let's, listen, they haven't ate either. No, they haven't ate either. Okay, we probably should shut this thing down. We're in a remote place. We're miles away from the nearest McDonald's. Okay, we got no food, no stuff. It's been a long day. Everybody's tired. And they notice. They notice a problem. That's incredibly important. Because I believe the church is filled with people that notice problems. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> um, Church is full of people that, that you, listen, y'all notice a lot of problems. Every church is filled with people that notice problems, right? Every single one of them. Maybe you grew up in a church and like everybody noticed problems. They didn't do anything about it, but they noticed a lot of problems. Every week is like that one person complain about the same thing. They, they notice a problem. And here's what I want you to see. You were made that way. If you're here today and you're a Christian, listen, you should see problems. You should walk through the church. You should walk through life and go, that's not the way that should be. There's a gap there. There's a problem there. Listen, have you, did you see how dirty that place was? Did you see how they didn't do that? Did you see how they don't have all, you know, they don't have enough singers in the band or they don't, they don't have an electric guitar. So if you play electric guitar, please come talk to me after service. I'd love to talk to you about that. You know, but they don't have electric. They, 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 you see gaps and you're made that way. Or maybe it's not in the church, but you, you see gaps in the world and, and you look at it and you go, you know what? There, there's no invention for that. Or there's no, nobody's taking care of the widows. Nobody's taking care of poor people. There's a whole bunch of foster kids. A, you, you see gaps. And you should see those. It's not a bad thing. People sometimes sit back and think, oh, you just, you just, you know, you just always see the negative. No, I, I, think, I think if you're here today and you say, listen, I'm a Christian, I'm a disciple, you were made to see the gaps in between heaven and earth. This is why Jesus prays this prayer. Our Father, he told us to pray the same thing. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Here's what he says. On earth as it is in heaven. That Jesus says, your prayer, my prayer should be that we would look at heaven and see what it should be. And we would look at earth and see what it's not. And we should do whatever we can to fill in the gaps. You were made that way. And, they, and again, they did that. They, they looked at it and said, hey, Jesus, we, we see a problem. And they go on. This is great. They got a solution too. Send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. It's like, listen, hey, Jesus, we've thought about the problem. Hey, guess what? We also have the solution. You do it. (laughs) Jesus, you send them away. 
You tell everybody to do this. You, send, you take care of everybody. You get them out of here, okay, because it's late and they're hungry. And honestly, if you read a little bit early in the passage, they're kind of hungry too because they hadn't really eaten yet either. And so it's kind of like this whole double thing. But they say, you send him away. No, no, this is so important. I do this all the time. My assumption is you probably do this all the time, which is when we see a problem, we want somebody else to take care of it. Somebody should take care of it. Somebody should clean that up. Somebody should watch the kids. Somebody should do something more about that. Somebody, you know, we need, we need this and we need that. And somebody should take care of these other things like that. And somebody should go over there and somebody should call that person. Somebody, you know, somebody. Or, or maybe you're like the disciples and you just go right to God. God, God, could you please help that person? They look cold outside. I mean, I'm sitting in my nice warm outfit and I got like three coats in my closet, but you know, they don't have a coat, but God, could you just help make that person warm? You just help them. Oh, they're struggling financially over there and I got a bank account and the whole deal, but you know, God, I just, I just want to pray that you, you got, you got, okay, you, I, I know, I even thought about the solution for them. They need more money. God, you give them some money. Just bless them financially. Okay, take care of them relationally. Give them a friend. That person needs a friend. I mean, I don't want to be the friend because I've heard about them. I'm not going to be the friend. But, you know, God, give them a friend because I'm sick of being their friend. You know, like, bless them. And we do that all the time. I do that all the time. And that's what they do. They look at this. They, they see a problem and go, Jesus, you take care of it. You, you take care of it, God. I mean, I'm not going to take care of it. I'm busy. I'm kind of hungry myself. But God, could you, could you help that person? Again, the book of James talks all about this over and over and over again. In fact, James says, don't, don't show me your religion. Don't show me your belief. Show me what you do. And this is why we're talking about it. This is what we do. Because too often what we say as a church and what we say we believe, and we talk about we, we believe in helping people and blessing people, we believe in the gospel, we believe in prayer, and we believe in all this kind of stuff like that. And yet we notice things that God's put in our hearts. There's some stuff in your world that God's put in your heart. And instead of doing something about it, Instead of stepping up and taking care of it, God, Jesus, you take care of it. I know the solution, Jesus. I'm even going to tell you when I pray. I'm going to tell you because you may not have thought about the solution yet, Jesus, but here, go help them. Go nurture them. Go mentor them. Go bless them. Go heal them. Go clothe them. Go give them finances. Jesus, you go. Here's what he says. This is awesome. But he answered, that's Jesus, you give them something to eat. You do. Now, again, who's you in this? That's the disciples. And this is so important because here's the deal. I grew up in a church world, okay, and some, I know some of you did, but let me tell you my experiences. I grew up in a church world where especially this pastor was preached, and it was preached in such a way that the pastor is meant to feed the sheep, Okay. The pastor is meant to feed the people, Okay, and, and this pastor is always taken from the crowd was the church and the pastors, the disciples. So it was like my job to feed all of you and you're all just supposed to get fat, dumb, and happy, I guess. I don't know, I don't know the whole, whole deal, but you know. But that's not what this passage says. No, 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 no. Who are you again? If you're here today and you're a Christian. You're, thank you. First service didn't do that. You're so much better. I love second service. Anyway, he says you. If you're here today, and you're a Christian. You need to understand that God's looking at you going, you fix it. You feed them. You take care of them. Yeah, yeah, pray to me. Okay, I'm, we're all about prayer. We pray like crazy. We're going to talk about that in one of the weeks coming up here. Okay? Prayer, prayer's powerful. Changes things, okay? All about prayer. But if prayer doesn't lead you to do anything, you're not doing it right. And Jesus says, okay, cool. You see a problem? Yes, we do. You fix it. You see a problem in our church? You fix it. Because again, I grew, up, I grew up in a world, and I grew up in a church where maybe some of you did too. The pastor did everything. The pastor was meant to feed everybody and lead the Sunday school classes and teach all the stuff like that and then go do the hospital visits and, and make sure that he met with people and had time with people and did some counseling, did the whole thing. Because let's be honest, everybody's fed in different ways, right? I mean, in a room like this, there's some of you that you just, you love the word of God and that's, that's so awesome and you're fed by it and you just hear sermons. You're like, oh, this is great. Feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. Others of you, like you, 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 like you're here and that's cool and it's helpful, but like you're fed relationally. And so you just, you need, you need time and you need people's time or, or, or when you're sick, you need people's attention or, or, or when you, you got to struggle financially, and you need money. I mean, we're, we're all fed differently. And I grew up in a model where, where the church 
was the crowd in this story and the pastors, how many pastors there are, they, they did everything and they did all the feeding and if the crowd, if the people in the church didn't get fed well enough, they went to another church because it was all about feed me. And I'm just here to tell you today, that's not the biblical model. That's not how Jesus set it up. That, that if you're here and you're a disciple, if you're a Christian, listen, you're meant to feed some people. And it may not be teaching. It may be parking people in the parking lot so when they walk in, they feel fed just relationally and they feel better. It may be in the kids' ministry where you're actually teaching the next generation to love God in a relevant, simple way. It may be in, in seating people down here. It may be in a number of different ways. I don't know how it is, but listen, here's what I know. You're made, you were designed to feed people. You've got a ministry in front of you. And, and if you're here, that's how we've designed this church. In fact, Paul says it differently. If you, if you just think that like, hey, maybe I'm misunderstanding this passage or whatever. Paul kind of reiterates this in Ephesians chapter 4. He starts in verse 12 and he says this. It's so fast and he kind of clearly lays it on the line. He says, listen, you want to know why Christ gave the church apostles, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Those four. He goes, you want to know why they gave church that, that, that people? To equip the saints... Which again, some people sit back and go, yeah, you just got to teach us and teach us and feed us. No, 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 no. Equip the saints for the work of ministry. My job, you just need to understand that if, if you're here today and I'm your pastor, you know, uh, here's the deal. My job is to equip you so you can work, period. And if you don't want to work, you might be in the wrong church. Just so you know, and if you're a guest, that was really harsh, and, and I stand by that. So anyway, okay, so, uh, but no, let's, let's hear this. I, I've been in too many churches where it was like, I'm just going to show up, and I'm going to spend like eight months, nine months here. I'm just going to sit in the service, and, and if it meets my needs, I'll stay here, and I might even raise my hand, and I might even write a check, or whatever. but you know, in the moment I don't get fed, I'm going to, listen, you're in the wrong place, and in fact, I would just, let me push you a little bit longer and say, you're in the wrong period, the point of the pastor, the point of the church, and the point of all disciples is you have work to do. You have a ministry. You see things different than everybody else. You see problems. Some of you, maybe you walk back in the kids' area and you see some problems. You're going, listen, I don't know why they do that and they can do that and da 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 Listen, let me just, can I just say, hey, listen, maybe God's put that on your heart so that you can do some, you can change some stuff. You can cause some good. That, that, that you're here. My, my job is to help you and equip you so that you can go do the ministry God's called you to do, so you can go feed people, because Jesus said, you give them something to eat. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you need to be fed too, okay, that's cool. But at the end of the day, if you're a disciple, if you're a Christian, you have a job to do. And I gotta tell you right now, there's some people, this, the, today of all days, let me, just, let me just speak today. Today, if you're here today and you're a guest, man, let me just say, we worked to get today done, all right? I mean, we, we worked to get the contest going on, and we worked to get stuff set up, and we worked, worked, worked. We, we had people, it's work, 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 work. Anyway, so, sorry, a little Rihanna there, but, you know, uh, we worked today, and people were sweating like crazy. Matter of fact, one guy, first service, is not an exaggeration. He was working and working and working. He got done, and he comes over to the wall like this. And I just see him in the back there, and he's just doing this. He's going. And I see it, and I think it's like this cool new thing. I'm like, man, maybe it's the wall is cold or something. Because like, I'm hot, too. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, it's not working. And he looks at me, and he goes, yeah, Nick, because there's a fan right in front of me. It's not in front of you. I'm like, okay, whatever, okay. You know. <laughs> I was like, I thought it was some cool new thing. I didn't know. But the point is, it's work. And, and here's the deal. If you're here today and you serve one, I want you to know, and I want you to hear my heart. Thank you. Thank you that you work. Because for too long, I think the church has been filled with people who don't want to work and just want to take and just want to get. And they've missed it. They've missed it that God loves you and saved you and redeemed you and called you into something deeper. But that's not so you can just sit back and receive it all. No, no, no. He's like, yeah, yeah. Now that you get it, now that you see it, now that you see the gaps and the problems, do something about it. I'm so thankful. Every single week, we've got about 96 volunteers that serve in this place. It's so, it's so amazing to me. 
I'm so thankful for all of you because I know, I know, you just need to hear my heart. Can we just be honest? Some days you show up and it's work. Some days you show up and you're like, I love this church. This is amazing. This is awesome. I love what I'm doing, whatever. Some days you show up and you're like, I get it. Because can I be honest? There are some days that I show up (laughs) and I'm like, it's work. You were made to work. I was made to work. And the church, the church was made to fill in the gaps between where it should be, where heaven is and where we are now. And Jesus looks at his disciples and says, you've got the wrong model. You've got the wrong model. No, 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 no. You don't just ask me to fix it all. No, no, no. You change the things that you notice. Let me just ask you really quickly. What is it, if this is your church right here, what is it that you notice that you don't like that maybe God's calling you to change? What, what, what is it that you walk in and maybe it just grates on you like every week you walk in and you notice it. You're like, hmm, yep. Can't believe nobody's fixed that yet. Can't believe no. Just, just so you know, if you walk up like, Nick, I noticed something. And we're like, awesome. Yeah, what are you going to do about it? Just so you know, okay? Because that's what I believe we're called to do. Next verse. They go on. They said to him, that would take more than a half a year's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? There, there's so much wrong with this, but let me, let me say this. Let me unpack it this way. They felt a lack in, what, in an area that they were called to lead. They, they looked at it, and they're looking at their pockets, and we find that they don't have anything. They eventually steal a poor boy's like, lunch early, later on in the story. You know, um, They have zero and Jesus says, listen, here, you fix it. And, and all of a sudden, they, they come back and go, are you kidding me? We don't have that kind of money for that. Are you kidding me? We don't have the time for that. We don't, we don't have the stuff for that. They, they have a, a lack in the area that God's called them to lead. And I'll just tell you right now, in the area, the thing, the thing that you see maybe, the thing that you see problems, the, the, maybe, the area, maybe there's an area in the church that you think you should take over, that you should step up, you will feel a lack in. You will see the need, but there will be a voice in your mind that says, you're not, you're not a good enough leader to do that. You don't have the personality. That. You'd be overwhelmed. You couldn't take care of that. You don't have the money for that. You don't have the, you don't have the personality for that. You're not patient enough for that. You, you can't handle that. You've tried that. But there's a lack in the area that God's called you to lead. It happens every single time. Can, can I just, again, can I just be honest? I feel lacking so often in leading this church. I can't tell you how many times I just, I just wake up. And there are moments where I just go, you know what? I don't know what to do. I'm going to do my best, but man, the running joke is we're, we're in this building project, which is awesome. But I, I, keep, I keep running to people going, hey, what, here's my question to other people. Hey, what are the questions I should be asking? Because I don't even know the right questions. And yet I'm held responsible for it. I'm, I'm the leader for the whole thing. And for me right now, just there, there's like a lack, and I'm trying to bring the best people around me to help me because we got this big thing, and we're gonna we're gonna change the city. But you know what? And I know it's the right thing to do, and I know God's in it, and I got. But listen, guys, there's a lack. I feel there's a gap between how I feel like I should be and what I should know and what I what I should be able to do and and what I am actually doing and and what's actually going on. And I just promise you, I just want you to know, because that's how the enemy gets us. That's how the enemy defeats us. You're going to be called to do some great things. You're going to be called to step up in some areas. You're going to be called to serve in some areas. And you're going to feel it in you. And immediately, all of the lack is going to come into your mind. Some of you, it, it's not about the church today. You've, you've got a marriage, or you've got a parenting issue. You've got a financial issue, and there's a lack. There's a gap. Because you know you're supposed to be a better husband or a better wife, and yet you look at your personality and, and, they, and your spouse has told you before, and you just feel like there's a lack, like I'm not disciplined enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not kind enough, I've tried this, I'm not loving enough, or I'm not getting loved enough, I don't have enough love, I don't, I don't have the bank account, I'm not, I'm not there, I don't have enough. There's a gap, there's a shortage. And God, I know what you want me to do, I know you want me to forgive them, I know you want me to go there, I want me to quit that. But there's a lack happens every single time. goes on, though. Jesus says, how many loaves do you have, he asked. To which, and it doesn't say this, but I just got to believe this. They just kind of look at him and go, like, because 
They don't know because he looks at them and goes, well, go find out. And what I want you to see is this. They said no before they even took inventory of what they had. They said no. They're like, we can't do it. Jesus like, do you even know what you have? No, it doesn't matter. I want you to go help that person. I can't do it. Why? I don't know. I just can't. I want you to give to that person over there. I want you to help sponsor a child overseas. I want you to go. I can't do it. How much money do you got? I don't even know how much money we got. I just know we don't got enough. I know I can't. I want you to serve in the church, or I want you to serve somebody else. Can't do it. I don't got enough time. Well, how much time do you have? I don't know. Just can't do it. Just can't. I just, I'm going to say no. I'm going to back out of it. Why? I feel a lack, and I haven't even taken inventory of what I am, of who I am, of where I'm at. And Jesus looks at him and says, listen, before you start discounting, before you start saying no to me, um, at least know where you're at. Because it's one thing, it's one thing to, to say no when you're like, hey, I can't do it because I got da 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 It's a completely different thing to be like, I don't even care what it is, God. Just, I, I, no, can't do it. No, not going there. And yet Jesus says, listen, go and see. See, God's calling some of you to do some stuff, and you're not even sure what you're gifted in. See, for the disciples, and we believe this as a church, we believe that every single Christian has a spiritual gift. That when you became saved, when you became a Christian, God implanted some unique gifts in you so that you could serve in a unique compassion, in a unique part of the church that no one else can serve in. We believe, we believe that. But the problem is, many Christians, you don't even know what you're gifted in. And so, so something comes up, and God's like, hey, I want you to leave that. I want you to, I want you to serve me. I want you to host some families and just feed them. And you got that gift of hospitality, but you don't know that. And you think, oh, nobody's ever did that for me. Oh, that people don't like that. Some of you, you've got some areas where everybody else sees it in you, and they're like, you should do that, and you should start that, and you'd be great at that. And you're like, no, no, no. I can't do that. No, you just, no, you don't understand. For some of you today, your next step, and you're going to get an email tomorrow with a link, but some of you, for your next step, is just to take a spiritual gift assessment. Just, just, just this verse right here, just to go and see, just to kind of figure out, hey, God, where am I at? And maybe, maybe you may have been saving no to something that God has uniquely gifted you for years and years and years ago. But you're like the disciples. You're like so many of us. You're like me too often. We just go, no, I can't do it. Do you even know where you're at, Nick? No, just can't do it. I'm done. Goodbye. Can't do it. Jesus is like, okay, first, before we have the conversation, just go and see. He goes on. They find out, and when they found out, they said, we have five loaves and two fish, which is awesome. And in another one of the passages, what we find out is they took like a Lunchable from a kid. Like that's really what they've got, okay? Like a kid there had a Lunchable, and they took it from him. Not really, they didn't steal it from him, but it's equivalent of they walk up to Jesus like, okay, there, there's a whole bunch of people here, and spoiler alert, um, there's like 5,000 men here. You put, add wives and kids, probably like 15,000 people. And, and, and here's the deal. They walk up and they're like, okay, Jesus, here's what we got. We got, um, we got a fish filet. Um, we've got another fish filet. And we've got, we've got five loaves here of bread. Hey, go, Jesus. You want to know what we got? Hey, Jesus, have you checked out how many people are here? There you go. You want, you, want, you want to know where we're at? You want to know what we had? There you go. Right there. Cool. Five loaves, two fish. Go. Go. Cool. That's all we got. And again, the lack comes up because, can we be honest, uh, five loaves, two fish, what's that feed? A few people, maybe. It takes five minutes to pass that out, and you're done. One person steps up, hey, I got it, okay, da, 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 done, okay, cool, we're out. We got 14,914 other people still to feed. But they give it to him. They give it to him. They go, okay, Jesus, you want, you want, here, here is all that we have. Collectively, all of us, five loaves, two fish. There you go. Here the story goes on. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups of, on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifty. So I want you to imagine, he's, on a, he's kind of on a hill a little bit. And see everybody, green grass, hundreds, fifties, 15,000. So huge sea of people. And Jesus is like, hey, everybody sit down in big groups. He starts to organize it. He starts to come up with a plan of action. He does that. He goes on. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. And in that moment, he blessed it. See, I want to tell you something right now. I'm going to push some of you really, really quickly. 
Some of you are wanting God to bless what you're not willing to give. Some of you, you've got some areas of your life that you're like, God, bless, bless my dating relationship. I'm trying to find the right woman. I'm trying to find the right guy. You know, bless my dating relationship, but I'm not going to give it to you. I'm going to go to the wrong places and try the wrong people and date the wrong people. Kind of do all, I'm going to do that. Or some of you, you got finances and you're like, God, bless us financially. Kind of bless this, bless this whole thing, bless us financially, but you know what, God, I'm not going to tithe, I'm not going to give to you, okay? I got, I got my, all I've got is five loaves and two fish, okay? You kidding me? I'm not going to give that, that's all I got. And I got this huge calling to do, I got I to feed people and pay rent and pay off my car, my cell phone and my cable bill and my other cable bill and Showtime and HBO and my internet and, you know, I'm just like, no. But God, bless it. God, bless my marriage. Oh, I'm not going to apologize. Oh, I'm not going to change into my ways. But bless my marriage. Bless my kids. I'm not going to take them to church every week, and I'm not going to raise them with you, but God, if you could keep them out of trouble, and if you could keep them close, and if you could do that, bless my kids. You need to hear me. God will not bless what you do not give. God cannot bless what you do not give. And there are some work people in here, and I tell you, I've been through seasons of that in my own life where I was asking God to bless an area that I was refusing to give to him. And he's up there going, not yet. No, I, I want to bless it. Not yet. No, you give it to me, Nick. You give it to me, and then I'll bless it. Because what happens after God blesses is the whole point of the story, and it goes on, it says this, this is so awesome to me. It says, then he gave them to the disciples, distributed them to people. He also divided the two fish among them all. Next verse. And they all ate and were satisfied. How many people were there? Like 15,000. How much food did they have? Five loaves, two fish. Two fish filet. Loaves are probably a little bit bigger than this. Five loaves. See, see, here's what I want you to see. What they added, God multiplied. What, What they gave, God multiplied. And too often, what happens is we're wanting God to multiply areas of our life that we're refusing to give up. Because the moment that God blesses something, the moment that all of a sudden a supernatural component comes into it and everything becomes possible, the lack is filled. The gap is filled. Not with you, but with Him. Not with your abilities, but with His abilities. And too often we come to situations that God's called to, and we're like, yeah, God, all I got is this five loaves. All I got is this lack of personality. All I got is this lack. And God's going, yeah, yeah, I know you don't have anything else, but if you, if you give it to me, I can bless it, and I can multiply it. But you know what the crazy thing about multiplication is? <laughs> Somebody shared this with me after first service. This is not original with me, but I thought that's brilliant. They said, you know what? Any number multiplied by zero. You know what that is? Zero. We got a lot of people in here that you're asking God to multiply. Zero. God bless my life. I'm not going to give you anything. You got a zero, God, but multiply. God's going, okay, cool. I will multiply it by infinity. Oh, zero. So you have no clue what God wants to do in your world. You have no clue the gaps that God wants to fill, the areas in your world that you struggle with, that you, you have all of these different areas where you're going, oh, I wish it was better, and I wish I had more, and I wish I had better relationships and deeper relationships. I wish my marriage was better. I wish there's a whole deal. You have no clue. But I really believe what we see here. Next verse ends with, and the disciples picked up 12 baskets full of broken pieces of bread and fish, and the number of the men that eaten was 5,000. What we see is what, what we add. God multiplies. But when what we're contributing to the church, when what we're doing in the church is zero, 10 times zero is zero, 100 times zero is zero, 3,000 times zero is zero. It doesn't, matter which, it doesn't matter what God brings to the table. It doesn't matter what God's multiplier is. You will always come up short. But the amazing part is you just start adding a one changes instantly. And some of you today, there's some areas of your life, there's some things in this church, there's some things in your marriage, in your life, in your job maybe, that God's saying, I need you, I need you to give it over to me. I need you to give it up to me. I need you to walk into it. I need you to give it up because I want to bless it. I can multiply it. I can do some great things. I can use you in ways you never imagined. 
But you got to give it up. You got to release it. You got to let it go. I heard that dumb song a billion times. Every time I say the word, let it go, it comes to my mind. I'm sorry. But it's so true. Because what I want you to walk out of here with is this. What we add, God multiplies. What you add to God's kingdom, what you add to the world, God multiplies. And the problem in the church, the problem in the world is not that God can't get it done. It's not that God's sitting up there going, oh man, I wish I could do more and hold it. No, 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 I've said it before many, many times. God is not lacking funds. He's lacking people with faith. He's lacking men and women who understand their role, who understand that they're a disciple, and who also understand that there is a lack, and look at that lack and go, I've got five loaves and two fish. This is not nearly enough, but... There you go, God. And if it falls off the table, it falls off the table. And if it doesn't end up like I think it does, should end up, it doesn't matter. Because God, my faith is in you. And I know I have lacks. And I know I have gaps. But I'm going to trust you. As a church, this is actually the passage that we, that really... I read and God spoke to me to start this church. It really was. And I preached on it before. I'm not going to walk through it again. But let me, let me just say this. That it, it was reading this. It was looking through the lack that really motivated me. And it was in that story because I remember I felt like God said, Nick, start the church. And we didn't have money. We didn't have backing. We didn't have loans. We didn't have any big fund. We had literally, this is not an exaggeration, zero dollars in the bank when I felt like God was calling me to start this church. Nothing. There was a lack. I felt like God was calling me to lead it, but there was a lack. And it was such a tension. But I have seen over and over and over and over again in this church that as we add, as we do our parts, we just say, hey, God, we're just going to add. Okay, we're going to add our five loaves. We're going to add our two fish. We're going to kind of do that. Here you go, God. God continues to multiply this church in salvations, baptisms, numbers, growth, areas to the point that we've got a brand new building that I cannot wait to get in. It's awesome. But it happened. It happened because people like you stepped up served. Because what, what jumped out to me about this story, can we go back one slide really quickly? What jumped out to me about the story was this, and I, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up with this. When, when the story starts and they're thinking, we're going to feed everybody, and they've got their five loaves and two fish, how long do you think it, do you think that they thought it'd take them to do that? 30 seconds? And yet, that's not how the story ends. The story ends, and it says there were 12 baskets full of broken pieces and bread and fish. Now, just a quick question. How many disciples are there? Twelve. Thank you very much, Rusty. You're the man. He went to Sunday school. So, so story starts. One guy maybe spends five minutes handing out, da-da-da-da-da, quickly done, cool. And it ends. It ends with what I think probably takes a very long time. And it's an all-hands-on-deck. And it's everybody doing their part. And it ends with every one of the disciples who originally thought there's no way this could happen holding a physical, tangible basket going, wow, look what God just did. And I got to tell you, I show up every single week into this church. And I'm so humbled and so grateful because I, I walk in and I know where we started and I know how this church started. And I go, wow, look what God's doing. It's incredible. And you know why? Because men and women in this church understand that they're a disciple that Christians serve, that Christians are meant to be the ones to feed. And it's not all me, it's you. And if you're here today, I just want to encourage you. If you're here today and this is your church, we need you to step up and serve. God's called you to step up and serve. And if you're here today and you're serving, but there's something in you, and you're like, man, I don't know if I'm in the right spot, or I, I see something else. I want to encourage you. Step into that. You talk to me. You can talk to Jan. You can talk to other people like that. Just step into that, because we need people to understand me. God's put a burden in your heart. God's put a burden in your heart. You know why so many churches struggle in the area? Okay, really. You know why the average church is less than 80 people and dying? They close more churches a month. It's ridiculous. I don't know the number, so I'm not going to make up one, but it's ridiculous. You know why those churches close? It's not the pastor's. 
Okay, I'll defend all the pastors. It's not the, pa- the pastors, it's not their fault. It's because people show up every weekend and they give zero. And anything multiplied by zero is zero. And so you can have a 500 person church. And if everybody gives zero, guess what it's going to accumulate? Zero. You know the impact it's going to have? Zero. You know the output it's going to have? Zero. Nothing. And this church, so thankful for you, so grateful for you. This church was built on people who understood. And I'm not awesome. I don't have it all figured out. And Nick, I feel really inadequate. I feel like I got a big old gap, but you know what? I got five loaves and two fish. Let's figure this thing out together. Would you all stand with me? This week, I want to invite you to do a few things. Again, you're going to get an email tomorrow. It's going to have a few next steps for you because some of you, you don't serve right now, and this is your church. I want to challenge you. I want to call you to step up, to step into the call that God's put on you, to quit using the church, to quit walking through it and thinking it's there to serve you and that you, you are somehow part of the crowd. You're not the crowd. You're the disciple. You go do it. You go be the church because the church is not the building. It's the body. For some of you, I want to encourage you to take inventory, take that spiritual gift test if you've never done that. Okay, it's awesome. It's enlightening. It might confirm some stuff. It might reveal some stuff to you. I don't know what it is. And the last thing is this, to take the area that God's put in you outside of this building and change the world that you live in. Feed people. Feed the people around you with the words that you say, with the acts that you have, with the stuff that you do. Because as a church, this is what we do. We're not going to talk about just what we believe and kind of judge people and kind of take it. No, no, no. We're going to talk about what we do. Because the church is meant to be a change agent in the world. The church is meant to change the town. And as a church, I promise you, if you hang out here, we absolutely are going to flip this town upside down. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, God, I just I pray right now you would make it abundantly clear what every single person in here needs to do. That if they are yours, you would burn in their heart. You would sear it to their, where they can't deny it. You would help them see that they are part of the solution. And you would, you would make up the gap. That you would fill in the lack that they have. Help us be the church. Not attend a church, but be it. Help us change our world around us. Help us feed the people around us. Help us look for opportunities. Because God, I know when that happens, Lord, I know that's when, that's when the world changes. That's what our town needs. That's what we need. Let us run to you. Let us give it to you and release it and let you bless it and multiply it. We love you. We thank you so much. Amen. God bless. Go eat some hot dogs. There's nothing greater than your love. You're more than we can imagine. There's nothing sweeter on this earth. You're more than we can imagine.